this is Ross from Versailles. I'm going to tell you very quickly why I believe every UC and contact centre environment should be managed with a service management framework like ITIL. Now UC and CC is a relatively new discipline to the IT world, I guess. And IT has been around a long time and there's a bunch of established processes and frameworks that have been created with very good reason. So I'm going to show you how these relate to the world of unified comms and contact centre, in particular ITIL and Versailles implementation via Versailles service management. So configuration management at the heart of ITIL, you've got to know what you have, where it is, how it fits together in order to manage that stuff. Um, furthermore, these environments are far from static. They are constantly changing. So configuration management meet, leads a huge amount of automation to stay current. So VSM's configuration management finds what you have, where it is, what state it's in, how it fits together, and all the dependencies between applications and keeps that current. It does it on a 12 hour cycle. So no manual configuration of dependency trees. Your automation, your AI does it for you in the VSM world. Once we have found all of those configuration items, all of those assets, they're very expensive to own, they're very expensive to operate. Uh, we know that. Uh, what Capacity Manager does then is it goes and looks at the consumption. So what do we have uh, in terms of volume and how much of that are we using? So in distributed environments, for example, a distributed communication manager that could have media gateways, port networks, media servers, session border controllers, session managers, they could be all over the world. And you've got to have the right resources, and in a lot of cases, a lot of the right number of resources in the right place. So Capacity Manager will tell you uh, what you have and uh, how much of that are you using. So you can move resources potentially uh, from areas where you've got too much to areas where you don't have enough. So you don't necessarily have to go out and buy some new stuff. So every consumption, every, every configuration item you have that supports consumption, we've got real-time and historic reporting for that. Now, Availability Manager, in the ITIL world, it takes a really pragmatic view because it takes the end user's viewpoint of what you do in terms of services. So how good is your service based on what the end users think? So not what based on what you think, not based on the fact that you've got no critical alarms and you can ping an endpoint, therefore it's up and available. You've got to overlay over the top of that. What is the end user's experience? So this is not just limited to voice quality, right? Um, there's a lot more to it than that. So voice quality is obviously the important part, but things like your inbound callers to your contact center, are they receiving the right queue treatment? So just because you have configured a certain treatment for inbound callers, for example, a mandatory upfront announcement followed by music, just because you've configured that doesn't mean to say that that's going to happen because if you have insufficient DSPs, if you have insufficient um, media uh, uh, announcement ports on your on your um, media server, um, you, you're going to run into problems here with bottlenecks. So you've got to know if all that sort of thing is happening together. So uh, in our case, in, in Versailles' case with VSM, we rolled the contents of not only the traps from availability management point of view and the pings and reachability and so forth, but we overlay that with all of the events, um, all of the errors. Um, all of the syslogs. Uh, we even look at the content of the, um, you know, the logs on Communication Manager. Um, we look at ECH from Contact Centre point of view. So we bring all that together in terms of availability to paint the true picture. So not only is our application reachable, but does it actually work and is it providing good service for our end users? Our Security Manager, um, I personally believe that there is a great deal of enterprises taking huge risks around the world, particularly with the deployment of SIP. So when you deploy SIP and you go to SIP trunk groups, you, you put in an, a session border controller to protect your network from, from the bad guys out there. So you're essentially exposing your unified comms and connect centre platform to the internet. So you've got to obviously be very careful there. But when you draw a parallel back to IT and IT teams, this is effectively the firewall, right? So it's your voice or your multimedia firewall. There is no such thing in the IT world as an unmanaged firewall. So IT teams are constantly managing 
and looking at their firewalls to make sure they've got the right rules in place to make sure that the enterprise is not being uh, targeted by a third party. And they stay on top of these things proactively. In my experience, the vast majority of session border controllers are unmanaged. And that's just, you know, that's, that's a problem just waiting to happen. So what security manager does in the VSM world is it will alert you in real time if someone's having a crack at your session border controller. So if your rules are being tested, or in fact, if you don't have a matching rule, so someone's trying to send invites, someone's trying to register an endpoint against your session border controller, um, this will raise an alert and, and let you know that that is happening. So things like denial, denial of service attacks that everyone's familiar with, they're actually pretty re pretty easy to detect. It's the more subtle, uh, it's the more subtle attacks that are that are really uh, are really difficult, and we'll put you in the picture there. Now, change manager increasingly important in this world that um, there's formal change management processes are followed. Change manager creates a formal change management process based on ITIL. Um, framework. So it forces um, engineers and, uh, and administrators to follow a, a more rigorous path, I guess. So they've got to um, lay out a plan, they've got to have a plan to go forward, they've got to have a back out plan, they've got to have um, some information around what constitutes a successful change, uh, they've got to improve, involve the change approval board. Um, so this is a really good pragmatic way to do that and do it in a very simple way. Uh, the size change manager also creates a permanent uh, change artifact. So after the fact, you've, you can always go back in time and look at what was changed in the past. There's also a very detailed change log contained in change manager. So who changed what, from where, when, and not only that, but what fields did they change? So if they changed um, a certain field from one value to another, that's also captured and kept in there. Uh, release manager. So uh, release management's a, a normally a very time-consuming process. Release manager automates that for you, so it looks at your configuration management database. So it understands uh, all of the hardware, all of the firmware, all of the operating systems, all of the applications, all of the patch um, levels, keeps an eye on that. And not only that, because we're a cloud application, it can do an anonymous comparison to the rest of the world. So we can look at similar architectures that are deployed globally, and, uh, and tell you where you sit against those in terms of, of release management. Continuity manager down here. So this is your kind of last resort in the ITIL world. Um, what do you do if you've had a major, major problem like losing a data center? So continuity manager, again, utilizes configuration management database. It, um, it can keep a record of obviously what you have, everything you have in terms of hardware, software, firmware, applications, patches, versions, everything is kept there, so uh, your environment can be rebuilt from scratch if you need to. You know exactly what components to get and how to put them together. And then finally, you can use off-site backups. So Continuity Manager uh, uses virtually all recognized um, backup protocols, and if files are sent to Continuity Manager, they end up in the cloud for 13 months, stored uh, for your access when you need them. And finally, up here, Service Desk. So it has all this information pours in uh, from your environment. So all the configuration management, capacity management, all the availability, events, incidents, statistics are all pour pouring in there. Uh, we can uh, dashboard those in real time. So you can see all of that information coming through in real time on a, on a nice dashboard. And of course, all of that information is there for historic reporting through uh, as well through historic reporting engines. So I hope you can see uh, very quickly just how well applying a service management framework to your UC and contact centre and environments uh, works. It will provide you with increased uptime, improved customer experience, uh, and really importantly from an IT management point of view is ITIL gets all of your people talking the same, the same sort of language. So you've got your um, data network teams can talk to your application teams, can talk to your uh, UC teams, all using the same language. So that encourages uh, collaboration and uh, and also crossover, the development of crossover skills, which is great. So implement ITIL to manage your, or implement a service management framework to manage your UC and contact center environment, and you will never look back. This is Ross signing out.